What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, today what I'm going to have for you is uh, a control arm replacement. Right here, this is what we're going to be replacing. We're replacing both control arms on this Mazda 3 right here. This one's a 2014 Mazda 3. So I'm just going to be going and showing you how to replace these control arms on there. So uh, we're going to be replacing these control arms today because uh, as you can see right here on these bushings on the vehicle here, uh, they've started to tear. One of them is actually completely just torn all the way through. So, and the other ones have started to tear. I'll show you once I get the vehicle in the air so you can see yourself. And it just has a lot of slop. You can, like, as soon as I get it off, I'll show you how much. This one right here is uh, pretty stiff. Placing this is gonna, it's just some preventative maintenance at the moment. Like, it doesn't feel any different or any rough right now, but eventually, the other ones are going to tear as well, and then you're going to start getting some clunking noises in the front end of your vehicle on acceleration and braking. So let's go ahead and replace these control arms. All right, so these are the tools we're going to be using to replace the, the control arms. Uh, I'm going to be using a 3 inch, half inch extension, a 19 millimeter socket, a 14 millimeter socket. Also, going to be using a 14 millimeter wrench. A breakover bar for some of those hard to remove uh, bolts on the control arm and a half inch drive. I'm not going to be using the breakover bar or the hand to half inch drive, I'm just going to be using my impact gun. But if you don't have an impact gun, these are the hand tools you're going to be using. So let's get started, let's get this vehicle in the air. All right, so once the vehicle's in there, we're gonna go ahead and remove this wheel right here. I'm only gonna be doing the one side because you're pretty much gonna repeat the exact same steps on the other side, so. All right, so I got the wheel off, but first let me go ahead and show you why I'm replacing them, so. As you can see right here on this bushing it is completely torn through right there and on the back over here on the top it's actually torn through and it's starting to tear a little on this side as you can see they're extremely weathered as well and then on the passenger side right here it's also all the way torn through so I showed this to the customer and he's he he went ahead and said to just go ahead and replace them all right so once you get the wheel off the next step is gonna be to there's gonna be two covers on the vehicle. This front cover, which is a little, which is a small cover, and then the rear lower cover, that's the one that covers the engine, and the oil pan on the bottom. We're gonna be removing that cover, and that cover is held in right here by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten millimeter screws, and it's just gonna be a few uh, push type clips as well that you're gonna be removing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these removed and remove the whole plastic cover from the bottom so I can access, uh, so I can show you another bolt that needs to be removed. Oh, and another tool I didn't mention I'm gonna be using is a flathead screwdriver, kind of just to, help, uh, to pull these uh, push clips out. Alright, so once we have all the hardware removed, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it down just like that. Just set it on the floor. Alright, so once you have that lower cover removed, we're removing that lower cover to expose this bolt right here. You won't be able to see this bolt and that's holding the control arm. Right here, this is a 19 millimeter bolt. And then the other two bolts we're gonna be removing are these two right here, which are also 19 millimeters. And then right over here, on the front, this one's a 14 millimeter. We're removing that. This is where we're gonna be using the 14 millimeter wrench on one side to hold it. And then we'll be hitting this one with the uh, 14 millimeter socket on the impact gun or on your breakover bar. 
All right, so we'll start on the first bolt on the front, 19, that 19 millimeter bolt. All right, then we'll go ahead and remove these two bolts right here. All right. Here's the three bolts, they're all gonna be different sizes. So you won't be able to mix and, mix and match them. All right, so next we'll be removing uh, this 14 millimeter uh, bolt right here. This is the one that holds the ball joint into the knuckle. So this is where we use our wrench to grab one side. And with your breakover bar or, or impact gun, you just loosen that up just like that. And this is why I love these cars from Texas, man. Look how clean that is. No rust, no rust. It's just, and it just lit out, no problems. All right, so we had that, once you take that bolt out, pretty much all bolts that are holding the control arm in are loose. So just gonna, all right, that was, that was pretty damn easy. If it doesn't come out as easy as that, uh, obviously it just depends on where you're at. If the, it's not gonna be as easy to pull out as it was for me, for other people, because I live in a, I live in Texas where, and especially where I live, it's it never really snows here. It never really does anything crazy here, and they don't salt the roads. So there's literally like no rust on this thing. So my, I was just able to pull it out. If you can't pull it out, just with the hammer, you're just gonna hit the control arm right here, and that will go ahead and loosen it. And you'll be able to pull it down just like that. And once you get the control arm pulled out and everything is loose, you'll just be able to wiggle it out and pull it out. As you can see, that was pretty damn easy. And just for a comparison to the new one, this one just is so sloppy. So sloppy. The new one is so stiff compared to this one. So this definitely will improve some uh, drive, like the drive quality of the car. Might make it a little smoother as well. All right, so let's go ahead and put that new one in. All right, so here we have the new one that we're gonna be installing. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Install it from the back first. That, up here. Just make sure this pin, this lower ball joint goes into the knuckle. and that new control arm's in. See how easy that was to just put that control arm in? It just slid right in. Let's go ahead and put these bolts back in. And once the control arm is in there, let's go ahead and install, uh, install the three main bolts that hold it up. So right here goes the longer bolt. Again, these are all 19 millimeter bolts. And they're all different sizes. This one's the longest one. This one over here is the short one. Come on. All right. All right, so we got these two bolts back here. They're just kind of put in by hand. And then here you go. This is where the, the third bolt is gonna go. Let's go ahead and line that up. All right, here's the last bolt we're gonna be putting in by hand. This one is the one that holds the, the ball joint on the lower control arm to the knuckle. And we'll put the bolt on the same way it was taken off. The nut end on the side that's towards the back of the car. And once you have all the bolts in place just by hand, we'll go ahead and snug them up with the impact gun or with your, um, with your half inch drive. And then after all snugged up, we'll go ahead and torque them down to the correct spec. Let's go ahead and snug that 14 millimeter up first. Grab it on the back with a wrench. 
right. And we'll go ahead and snug these three 19 millimeters up. Right, and that control arm is in. Next, we're just gonna go ahead and torque all these down. And the torque specs for these are gonna be, for this one right here, this one's gonna be 101 foot-pounds to 126. This one over here is gonna be 74 to 89 foot-pounds. The one in the front, which is the fatter, bigger bolt, is gonna be 158 to uh, 191 foot-pounds. And then this one right here that holds the ball joint to the, to the knuckle, this one's gonna be uh, 27 to 31 foot-pounds. So we'll start with this one right here. And that last one right here. And that's it. They're all torqued down. All right, last we'll go ahead and install the wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side on camera. I'm just gonna show you how to do the one side because it's pretty much exactly the same thing. And then once you're done with that, you just go ahead and reinstall that lower cover the same way you took it off with the clips and the 10 millimeters. And uh, when you're done with everything, just torque the wheels down to the correct spec, which is about 88 foot-pounds, and uh, you're pretty much done. All right, so I went ahead and installed the other side. Super easy, just as easy as the uh, passenger front side was. Everything snugged up. There's that bolt right here on the passenger side. Mazda really does give you room for everything. And that was super easy. Honestly, probably the easiest control arms you could ever replace on any vehicle. And that's pretty much it, guys. As you can see, that was so simple. Such a simple, easy fix. Like I've said many times on many other of my videos before. These monsters are so damn easy to work on. Hey, look, anybody can do any of this stuff. And uh, that's going to be pretty much it, guys. If you found the content helpful, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, uh, subscribe. Man, you guys have been killing it out there. I can't believe uh, the channel is growing at the rate it's been growing at. I'm not a, I like, I literally wake up every day and look at it, and I'm just like, oh, my God. What's going on here? You guys are really liking the content. And I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys are, you guys are freaking awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.